This current integration of the armed forces is another major step forward in the arc of social justice in America. This is a huge symbolic advance. It is real for the 60,000 gay and lesbian service members who are serving today, for the hundreds of thousands who have served in the past. Unfortunately, it's still not a reality for all the transgender service people, both past and present, but we're working on making that happen. Still, any time there is a huge step forward such as this, it speaks to the hope that is America, something that keeps us inspired and motivated as we move forward to bring freedom and equality to every American. Well, I think at, at this point, what's necessary is experience. People need to be out, and when people are out, their colleagues, their fellow soldiers, will begin to understand, just the way many Americans do, that there really is no difference between straight and gay Americans. We still have a huge problem in the military dealing with the sexes. You know, women have a very hard time as far as sexual harassment, even, even rape from their own fellow soldiers. This is something that is an evolutionary process. It is a generational challenge. And this is the next step at to bringing us to a more inclusive, fairer, and more effective fighting force. I think the greatest obstacle to sexual freedom and progress is simply the weight of tradition. Parents become very traditional when they have children. They go into protective mode and they find that what they know, what they learned as children themselves, is a comfortable place to be and they're not as willing to go beyond what they knew, what made them comfortable. So I think it's the weight of tradition, the weight of cultural taboos that have been with us for millennia that really do limit us. And again, as with the military now, the most important thing is simply to be out, to be oneself, and that slowly breaks away at traditions which limit people and help us create new traditions which allow us to be more expressive.